child to do something he's not ready to do, which can create more problems. Okay, I want to get to this real quick. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we're not allowing our children to do is take risks. Uh, they need to be involved in risky play, and this is like a whole, another whole conference. It's because if you saw your child do that, what would you do? Nothing. It's good. I there's someone coming down the slide. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> so, I, I, I have a scar right here from uh, doing that when I was uh, five. Mm -hmm. I put the water hose Thank on. No one's on the slide. <laughs> yeah, but right. if somebody's trying to come down, I would right. probably tell myself, hey, you're about to get pummeled. My word is going to be a tall slide. It would be dangerous if they fall, and they're getting close to the top. I would go get them. Okay? The situation. Mm -hmm. Children should be allowed to take risks like going up the slide. And I agree with you that it's got to be, you know, you've got to look at it and see. But children have not been allowed to take the risk that they need. Because risk helps children, they challenge themselves. That's how they gain confidence mm -hmm. in their abilities. Is that when they're allowed to take risk because they're challenging their own abilities. And so they learn what they can and what they cannot do yet. Because some things that they learn they can do, it's just that they can't do some things yet. They'll get there. Um, it helps them to go beyond their comfort level. That's how they learn what they can do. And they do learn how to fall and to fail. It's okay for them to fall. You don't want them to fall from a 90-foot tree. <laughs> But they're going to take those tumbles. And they're also going to, everything's not going to work out, so it's okay for them to make mistakes. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. We're not perfect parents. There's no perfect parent, no perfect child. And we're all learning. And then also to overcome some of the fears. Reason, another reason why the free play and movement is so important is, is that there is an inner ear system called the vestibular system in the brain that has to do with balance. It also has to, has, has to do with helping a child learn how his body functions in space. And this vestibular system is one of the earliest systems to develop it. It develops in utero. It's how the kind of baby moves around in the fluid. Okay, so that's the system that's being developed. That system continues to develop after birth when children, when they turn, when they climb, when they swing, when they do all those kinds of movement because it stimulates those, those uh, hairs that are in that vestibular system. The vestibular system is one of the most important parts of a child learning how to pay attention. But if we don't let our children play on playgrounds or do some of these kinds of things, that system is not developed. That's why so many children I see today have trouble even walking. Or they don't have a balance. It's because they're not getting the type of movement that they need. And you can just see it. They have to have that sense of internal balance. There's another little child <coughs> who's taking a risk, and he's okay. He survived. The other thing that I, I would encourage you to do, and that is to get outside. There is no, nothing better for children than being outside in nature. Uh, I'm a big proponent of taking kids outside. If, especially if they're upset, you can take them out into green space. And there's research that says that their cortisol levels immediately drop once they see green space. So they need to be in outside. They're happier, healthier, and stronger because it develops their immune system. They need to get dirty. They need to eat a little dirt. Uh, I have a book over there. No, I didn't bring that one. Let them eat dirt. But there's one of their on balanced and barefoot. Um, they have layer, layer, lower stress levels. And they learn to respect themselves and what they can do. So take your children outside. Get them outdoors. Does boat shops count? It's pretty dirty. That's <laughs> all James, I think we're good there. <laughs> Dirt never hurts. Physical activity actually changes the chemical and emotional states of the body and often changes the child's mindset because the mindset is that he gains more confidence, he wants to try new things, he has that sense of, okay, I can take some risk, 
uh, just more <coughs> confidence building. And then how can you learn about nature or about God if you're not in God's world? It's the greatest way to teach kids about God is that when you're in God's nature, when you're looking at leaves, when you're looking at worms, when you're looking at butterflies, or anything that's just out in your backyard or out in a walk in the park, getting them outside, there I just can't tell you the number of benefits. It's letting them play in the sand. All those kinds of things that are in dirt are good for building their immunity, and if they don't <coughs> get those, then sometimes their immune systems are not as healthy as they, they could be. Okay? So your greatest contribution is helping these kids to build some better brains. Um, Marianne, you've got about three minutes okay. before we need to pick up our rules. Okay. I'll be through in about two. Uh, here is a sheet I just wanted to take for you to have. Uh, it talks about uh, discipline, <laughs> behavior, and really plays right into what we have been talking about tonight. Um, and there are some resources on the back. I want you to look down to about the one, two, three, uh, third arrow. Behavior is a consequence of feelings and needs. Addressing the feelings and needs or the behavior will not change. Some of the forces affecting behavior in the diagram below. And if you look on the back, you will see that diagram. And it's kind of some of the things we've talked about tonight. We didn't get into nutrition, but that plays into it well. But the exercise or movement part, the stress will affect. So anything you can do to uh, lower some of that stress level, which does come from building those relationships. And of course, then sleep, which is another one we didn't get to talk about, but that's very important too. Um, and just remember that a young child operates from the emotional parts of his brain and is unable to access, uh, access the higher level and sound decision-making part of his brain that's necessary for self-regulation. So all young children are operating out of that emotional, I need connection, I need you type part uh, of their brain. So I hope this will be uh, a little bit helpful for you. And then I have a sheet that, as I stated earlier, we can't parent without God. And so sometimes it's always nice to know, well, how can I pray for my child? And so these are, this is just a sheet that is just some little sentence prayers that you can put your child's name in them. Because Nothing is better than praying for your child each and every day and asking God to really bless them, protect them. I pray for protection for my children every day because it's, it's not a pretty world out there in some places. And so it's important to pray um, for your child each and every day. So I would like to do that right now is to pray for each one of you. Thank you for letting me share with you. Um, I hope I did not make you feel bad. I did that was not my intention. My intention was to challenge you and to help you to see the importance of your job as parents. There is, as I said at the beginning, there is no greater thing than you are doing right now than parenting your child. Trust me. I've been there. I survived. And you will too. And I know I was sitting in your chair not too many years ago when people were saying that to me, that what you're doing is so important that it will pass. And I kept going, oh, you just don't understand. You just don't understand. So I know what you're thinking. But it will pass. 
those years are short. The days are long, the years are short, as they say, and that is so true. So I just challenge you that whatever you need to do to have time for your child, to build those relationships, to help them develop that safety and security in their feelings of attachment, do it. You will not do anything better for yourself and for your children and for our world than investing right now in the lives of your children. And I know it takes some sacrifice, and so I pray that you would be open to doing whatever you need to do. So let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for this time that we've had together. I thank you for each of these parents that are here. I thank you for their children. Lord, they are all such precious gifts from God. And Lord, I know it's hard. I know parenting is hard. It's hard work. So I pray that you would just bless each one. I pray that you would give each one the strength, physical strength, emotional strength, that they need to be able to be the parent that you would have them to do. And Lord, we know we all mess up. We know you're a forgiving God. And we know that our children mess up. And so as parents, we need to be forgiving parents. You parent us with grace. So I pray that we would parent our children with grace as well. I pray that you would just bless each family as they go back now to their homes and give them a good night's sleep and rest. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>